Okay, so this is the fourth game in the over the board chess tournament that we went to this weekend. Now we play as black and the opponent is rated 1324. We are currently 1308. So they push through the center with e4. It felt a little bit unusual seeing seeing an over over the ball player play e4. Um, every time I see it, it looks kind of odd because it doesn't seem to be favoured by the over the ball players. They tend to just come out with some other fancy d4 or some c move or something like that. Anyway, so they brought the knight out and we developed our knights and they brought the bishop out and we captured. We wanted to this is the line that we were practicing although it's slightly a little bit different but um, this is the line we've been practicing for ages if you've um, seen the recent videos and past videos of we try to do something different um, because ordinarily you know if they come out with the bishop like this you know we can just bring the knight out here or we're just developing the bishop here and then looking to go and castle that sort of thing but from evaluation um, basically the computer was basically saying oh you want to be taken here and then pushing this pawn i didn't like it at first because i thought well I, i'm not really i don't feel settled in myself in terms of my king's not really castled or getting anywhere near castling and i've not developed any other pieces yet i'm actually attacking a piece you know with the same piece that i've just moved in a sense so it kind of went against the grain of the initial concepts of chess that we know and love but we've been practicing and practicing and i thought oh this is um ideal let's just let's just take this and see what the opponent does not everybody knows what to do you know in response to it and we just sat and waited for the opponent and they took a long time so i thought oh they're not actually going to take this knight i think they're going to do a sacrifice I think they think they're going to win something by coming here. They took ages over the move. Ordinarily, you know, it'd just be a straight, simple take, you know, and then they get the piece back. But we've also followed this line as well with the bishop taking here. We've had a few games where they've done that and we've worked our own concept with that based on evaluation and it also is based on what the opponent actually does so you still have to use your own brain rather than thinking about okay this is a set way of moving this is how they're going to respond and we looked at each move individually and they actually took um and i did i said to myself i know they're definitely going to take now i mean sitting waiting just taking this night really was the bees bees knees for them but taking here i'm thinking okay if i don't play it right then they can be quite clever with this type of maneuver so even i took a while over this next move even though i knew the pattern already i knew i was going to take it but i just wanted to re make sure that i re-familiarize myself with the pattern because the expectation is we take and then the queen is going to come here. We do have a smaller piece which will be able to touch onto the queen. If the queen then decides to take the pawn then we can look for an exchange of the, um, of the queen. Because our king is already disturbed anyway. So we're not really losing any key tempi. If the queen takes back. And we do have the bishop as well. So that was the initial sort of outlook. That was the key thing that the opponent was definitely looking at doing. And once we took our bishop, they still took a long time over this next move. And I'm thinking, that's really kind of the only thing you're going to go for. Um, really should be looking at taking the knight, you know, to gather, gather a piece back or something. But the queen comes down. As you can see, the gauge bar is kind of singing for us. But again, when you look at the gauge bar, this is just basically because we have the bishop. We have an extra minor piece up. So it's not really about position play because look where our king is. You know, the position isn't clever. 
So as we mentioned, we push the pawn on smaller piece attack and higher piece. Can't be wrong in this situation. So they take the pawn. So it's following the line that we already know. And have to be very mindful because behind that little stealth move is the rook. But this is where they realized that they kind of are not getting the piece back because all we need to do is bring our knight back here which is defended by the queen and it's also defended by the king so we bring the knight back so that type of knowledge of it looks really frightening you know with them taking and in front of the king and the king's now not getting castled so in essence they've won the 20 pointer but they've not won a very good position because if you have a look at the tail of the tape we've actually developed a knight and we've got space now in front of their king their queen is in front of their king so all we need to do is jostle a little bit of movement to potentially start putting pressure on this file his other pieces are a little bit dormant at the moment so inactive all because they lost the key tempo with the bishop taking the pawn here but like I say it does look devastating and if you don't play it correctly then maybe they can win tempo and um, get pieces back such as like the rook and stuff so the knight comes down so again don't really need to lose any sleep over this because a smaller piece attacking a higher piece again can't be wrong so in essence it looks like potentially losing the knight but they capture the knight with the queen so we can capture back but then they realized <laughs> um, in this particular position there was a massive sigh you know from the opponent they went ah oh. because once they took then I took with the king a big massive sigh came out of the head like oh damn they didn't realize that the knight was going to get taken as well so we're still the extra minor piece up we still have to box clever um, I'm mindful that they haven't got their minor pieces out their rooks aren't linked we don't have either so it's going to be a race to try and find the better position so the um, pawn pushes down so it's obviously looking for an x-ray through excuse me an x-ray through to the rook so simply bringing the bishop here defending then we can bring the king down here to attack the bishop if they decided to do that so we brought the bishop up and then another side came out um, I think I was upsetting the apple cart a bit so the pawn pushes through now looking to make space for the bishop somehow maybe sitting here or sitting there so we move the king now with a discover check on the rook obviously that's pretty obvious but hey it puts a threat it makes them do something they don't want to do so feeling fairly comfortable but I'm still a bit smarting about these two they're not in the game yet uh, Rook probably wants to touch onto the king but it's easily defended type thing so we bring the bishop through to attack the king I wanted to try and where possible just keep on attacking and attacking you know sort of stopping his pieces getting together and working together so the king moved into the corner so now we can start developing the knight so we've got like a bit of a target area we're thinking about attacking these pawns here because they've got no protection on so the knight's out attacking the bishop so we can bring the bishop back again nice and safe and they bring their bishop out so now we attack the two pawns here and i suppose this could have gone either way but he moved the rook so then we took the pawn and the knight is now on the rook so that's pretty straightforward nice simple attacks I'm trying to get my pieces working together as best possible I know these are single attacks but there doesn't look to be any sort of uh, counter attack from the opponent at the minute so we're looking like we can, we can get away with these single attacks but working the pieces together we've got spaces here as well which is working the bishop and the knight so again we, we do like to work them together and we'll take advantage of weaknesses where we can so long as there's no major counter attacking so the rook goes far into the corner I was hoping that they would go here when I said oh if they go there what happens the stealth bishop 
but they didn't so they moved the rook so we jumped in attacking the knight like I said I just wanted to keep that kind of momentum going the pressure on the opponent just to make them do things that they don't really want to do now, as you can see the gauge bar is really kicking in here but I'm never impressed with the gauge bar being like that if I don't have anything you know if, if it's just because I've got a minor piece up then so be it but like we say you can have as many pieces on the board as you want but if they're not in the right positions then they're tantamount to being useless so they moved the knight so now we're bringing the bishop through here now the reason why we brought this bishop here was to tantalize the pawn down so that then there's no no protect well there's one protector there but there's less protection on here and there's less protection on here bringing more space and, and a gap towards the rook i had the idea of bringing the bishop here x-raying through the, the knight and through to the rook but i don't think realistically i was i was just doing it to be you know it's like doing a, a pretend attack a fake attack just to say look i'm still here i'm still busy you've got to think about these things so they pushed down and then we brought the bishop back and I mean to me I classed my white square bishop as like a, a, a the bad bishop but in hindsight it's neither here nor there really I'm only classing it as bad because obviously it's these these guys are on white squares at the minute and it can't they can't maneuver uh, so basically my bishop can manoeuvre, dark square bishop can manoeuvre around a little bit. So I wanted to trade down as well because we've got a minor piece up and that could give us more advantage um, later on. I think they could see this so they weren't taking. So like I said, brought the bishop here now x-raying through to the king through to the rook. And then I could feel my opponent's heart pumping through his chest when he did this move nice x-ray through there through here but it's a, just a simple case of bringing the bishop back because it's got the support of the king and then a, another sigh was let out so we're constantly giving them things to think about all the time there was a moment of reprieve here where you know they thought they had escaped so they brought the bishop back so now we're looking again to lean through and looking to try and trade off get these rooks off the board so we bring the knight down now attacking the bishop putting more pressure onto pieces looking to get traded and then the knight comes down it did take a while over this move but my knee jerk reaction if i had to move fast was just taking here now if you remember the game from yesterday where against the 1981 uh, where basically simply taking taking the bishop i think it was the bishop with the um, with my bishop or something like that it was a simple man maneuver and I got all arty moving my bishop around and I says it's not happening today but I did take my time I didn't do like a knee jerk reaction and go bang bang um, if I had to do it quick I would just whip it off the board long play I thought right don't fall into the trap that you fell into yesterday okay don't get arty just keep it simple so I worked out in my head what simple looked like before I actually placed my finger on it so I don't want it in any way thought of that oh well I just whipped it off the board just because of yesterday um, I calculated which was best which was the best yeah so that was the first choice obviously but then there were other choices I was thinking of taking here but then he could take our bishop then if we take his rook then he could take our rook then I can take his and I want to work that and I thought well that's a lot really because there's no guarantees he's going to move that way and I might lose out tempo wise somewhere so then I came back to the basic one of having a look at how we looked here uh, which one does he take with probably not wanting to take with this one but it's never here nor there takes we take this bishop either way so it felt simpler there was no complications there you see there's only one or two lines here whereas the other one afforded them loads of opportunities oops so that's what we did we, we captured but what i want to do is just break go through what would have actually happened i just want to see what the gauge bar says so if we took 
and then if he went fancy and he took struck down a bit for us but then if we just grabbed and if he grabs now this was the part I couldn't really see because it was too far for me and I did say I'm probably just going to take that and whip that off because we've got the bishop and we've got the rook if he comes down and takes takes and takes then we've got the bishop king can fly home so it would have worked out for us either way although I did I think I preferred our way I mean this leaves us with a bishop and everything and, and that type of stuff but yeah it can easily still be locked down I suppose anyway we'll go back to whence we so we captured and they captured looking to basically get an x-ray through to our king so taking time to have a look at what was actually going on we grabbed the bishop because that was the plan all along get that out of the way reducing down the pieces as best possible king moves now feeling really happy that he's got this x-ray through but we simply move the king off of the line now he's look I, I thought he was looking to double up on on the bishop but we put a check on just to win a bit of tempo to beat his doubling process so the bishop wins us that very valuable tempo in terms of being able to come here and attack the rook so we attack the rook and then they attack our bishop because it's got nothing defending it so then we bring the bishop through looking to x-ray through to the pawn but not taking it immediately because obviously we will get trapped and the rook hides into the corner at first i didn't really know what that was because rooks don't have any place in the center of the ball but then i thought oh maybe they're going for this sort of thing but that's really bad position for the rook if they did that so we start the plan of doubling up he's not happy with that but let's just keep doubling anyway and then they bring their rook across and at this point here now um i did take a while over this next move i just wanted to make sure that tempo wise um we we do win out and we're not trapping the bishop somehow so simply capturing here um, as far as i could tell really wasn't an issue because he couldn't come and, well he could attack it but then we'd be able to just take the rook off the board so that worked out for us quite nicely i think so then we captured and at that point my our opponent resigned so i was really pleased with that game because um it seemed to bring out lessons learned from recent games and lessons learned from the sessions that we did prior to coming to the tournament and we've had a half point by we had one win one loss one win so we're on two and a half at this moment in time so that is the 50 50. so the 50 50 mark has been achieved at game four so that was my target i'm a happy man let's go on to the next game